so now uh, we're we're still moving through we're we're covering imposition chronologically, right? So um, first uh, cognates, then loans, then foreign transcription, and now we get into the Middle Chinese period uh, and its imposition from uh, Song Dynasty rhyme tables. Yeah. So I'm going to introduce you to the Song Dynasty rhyme tables. I think this will be a little bit short, but we'll see. And then this is the last on um, imposition, and then we move back to transposition. Okay, so the the rhyme tables. We have two rhyme tables, and they're basically identical. Uh, the Yun Jing published in uh, 1161 by Mr. Zhang Lingzhi, and the Qi Yin Re. Somehow I'm missing out the vowel there. Uh, also published in 1161, so it was a good year for uh, Chinese rhyme tables. Uh, and it was published by uh, Mr. Cheng Chao, but uh, he published, this is my understanding, this whole uh, Tongzhi encyclopedia, whereas uh, the Qi Yin Re is just kind of thrown into this much larger work. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what do these things look like? I move my mouse over here. So, so what? information is given in a rhyme table. Well, the rhyme category, which is called U, uh, the initial category, which is called Shumu, uh, the rank, we will discuss what all of these things are in a moment. Uh, and then whether or not the syllable has a medial W, which in Chinese terminology is Foco or uh, has a medial W and Tycho or does not have a medial W. Okay, so this is a page from the Yunjin. So now you can, you know, imagine yourself opening the Yunjin and uh, seeing this. So I will go through how to read it and how to use it now. Yeah. Uh, and then this is the same chart in the Qi Yin Lue. And actually, if you just look, like, keep track of a character, like this character there, you keep your eye on it, and then you see that it's, where we go? It's there. <laughs> it's there. Yeah. So it's the same. Yeah, they're, they, I mean, they're not exactly, but work. In principle, the stuff on the page should be the same in each one, but of course I haven't checked it exactly. Um, but they have different terminology across the top, uh, if, you, if you notice. And maybe I have this on another slide, but um, uh, these ones are acrophonic, is the, I think, the correct English word, which means is to say it says like uh, bake for B and um, you know, fish for F and whatnot. So it gives you a word as the name of the sound that begins with that sound. Yeah. Uh, whereas these ones actually specify the place and manner of articulation. So they don't say, you know, bake for B, they say bilabial voice stop. Yeah. Uh, and that's one, actually, I mean, because of my experience, that's the major difference uh, between these two books is just what terminology they use. This one uses actual phonetic terminology, uh, and then this one uses this, this acrophonic terminology. Uh, okay. So let's uh, zoom in. So we're looking on the upper left side of uh, chart 23. And then here you have the names of the rhyme categories. And here you have the initial categories. And then this syllable says that, uh, or this character says that, uh, that, that this character is pronounced with this uh, rhyme and with this initial. And there's a circle that means phonotactically impossible in Chinese, yeah? Um, now, then in principle, you only get one character for each syllable type, right? Or for each actual syllable. I shouldn't say syllable type because it will, it will confuse you with what I was saying about the Shishan series, which is say like, okay, there's, there's, you know, uh, if, if there are homophones, like bot, meaning, uh, you know, uh, Piece of computer code or box being the past tense of by, 
those will not occur. Only one of them will occur in 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 the spot you know has run opt and initial b right. Okay, uh, so so here I have uh, transliterated uh, or you know uh, yeah. Well, you see what I've done, right? I've gone, I've gone from this to this, yeah. Uh, so this is mine, and then I write these are you know my little Chinese uh, romanization. And so you get a sense of what's uh, going on in, in terms of different uh, rhyme categories, you know, the on, 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 yeah. and then n, 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 yen, yen, yen. Right? Uh, okay. Do I have anything to highlight here? No. Okay. So uh, now I'm uh, looking at chart one here, close up. And then I am zooming in on it. Uh, so uh, I, I, I think it's nice to look at chart one because it's famous. Yeah. This uh, word that means East is the first character in the Rhine tables. And it's also the first character in the Rhine books. Uh, okay. And then I will just point out and uh, maybe explain this uh, some other time. But this character should not be here. This should be a blank. Yeah. So there are mistakes in the rhyme uh, tables, uh, and then um, and I find that quite interesting because they, people don't talk about it, at least in my experience, very much. But of course, it, it's it, 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 it poses an interesting sort of epistemological conundrum, which is you know uh, we we are using this as our primary source. So what do we mean by it has mistakes? Well, in this case, you can see actually that this uh, is a mostly empty. Um, uh, row and now not that you should make everything mostly empty entirely empty that would oftentimes itself be a mistake but that's the kind of thing that um you uh you that that, that, that i think is, is where you would start to say basically what we mean by it's a mistake is it's inconsistent with the overall pattern it, that this document puts forward yeah and in, in more technical terminology uh it's division three which you can tell from its initial uh, and yet they put it in division four but uh, uh, let's uh, now uh, look at this. So um, yeah, here I'm just basically, uh, I'm so showing you two different pages and then I'm gonna talk through both of them, right? So here's page uh, 23 and there it is, and here's page one and there it is. Now we go back to 23 and rhyme category. So I've just made this character big so that you can see, okay, this character is in this rhyme category. Yeah, that's just how to read this chart. Uh, and then uh, here on the first page, this character is in this rhyme category. And as you see, then, which is why I'm having you look at uh, more than one page, here we have more rhyme categories. Yeah. Here, the, this, this part of this page has four rank categories, whereas here, this part of this page, the same part of a different page, only has one rank category. Okay. Uh, uh, or there is then, this uh, word, uh, or... You mean across the top? The, the initials? Yeah, they're the same on every page. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so now let's look at now. So we've I've said that. Um, so so let's say let me just back up to. And so we looked at this. Uh, so this hen character, it's in the sun rhyme, sun rhyme. Uh, and now we look at its initials. So we go up, and then you see it's ching. That means it's voiceless, unaspirated, and it's poying, which means that is some kind of laryngeal. So it's a voiceless, unaspirated laryngeal. Oh, do we if we did not together? Yeah. Um, why do we start? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, and now let's look at uh, this one. So uh, here is uh, this lun and it is a liquid resident. So 
uh, liquid. This is um, uh, resin. Okay. So this is not Qing, this is Qing Zuo, which means, so, so Zuo, Zuo is, means voice, and Qing means voiceless. So I understand this uh, terminology as being extremely clever because they're saying that uh, resonants don't distinguish between voicing and, and voiceless. So if it's, if it's sort of, so I mean, the terminology is very compact, but it's sort of neither voiced nor voiceless or both voiceless. And I mean, I think neither is, is better. But, but let's say, you know, if we allow ourselves to be checked for a moment, we can really say it's, it's just neutralized, yeah. Um, yeah. So the, yeah, it's both about well, it's Chinzo and and as a as a region or this. Yeah. So basically, this row says the what the manner, and this row says the place, right? Um, so here we say its manner is resonant. Place is liquid. Uh, and well, then, but I understand this question, but yeah, no, it's not really a word. Well, no, I'm going to the first to the, so to the, yeah, the, uh, or the why. Well, this one's not a, uh, oh no, this is a, well, they, they think yeah is a laryngeal. Okay, so <laughs> sorry about that. Right. I'd be interested in learning about how, um, how the Chinese uh, phonetic um, theory. Uh, developed how, what they what they uh, drew from the Indic uh, tradition and uh, what was developed uh, what was developed locally. I mean, the truth is, there's like as far as I know, the the secondary literature on this is not very satisfying. So everyone agrees that this is a, um, or let's say the minimum, everyone agrees that this kind of phonetic terminology is post Buddhist and is. Uh, but let's say that doesn't say anything about influence. It just says something about absolute phonology, right? Uh, but then uh, there's also some evidence that it comes out of a Buddhist milieu. Uh -huh. um, so uh, I think I'll get to this. But the the, the first guy who lists, or not necessarily the first guy who, li who lists initial uh, the initials, like the if you like the the phonemes, uh, initial phonemes. Uh, maybe he wasn't the first, but the first one we have evidence of, uh, who is also traditionally credited with inventing it, was a Buddhist monk. Yeah. So there is that kind of um, strong circumstantial evidence of a, of a relationship between Buddhism and uh, Chinese uh, sort of phonetics and phonology. And of course, if you just look at the initials, you know, it's sort of kaka gana, cha cha jana, da da Yeah. So you're like, oh yeah, okay, I I know where I am here. I'm in India. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but like exactly why they say muddy for uh, voice or clear for uh, voiceless or extra clear for aspirate, uh, that's, I don't know of any uh, literature that has satisfactorily, you know, um, connected the Indic tradition with the, the emerging Chinese tradition, yeah. So uh, if, if you want to write about that for your assignment, you know, that would be a good one. Um, but actually, I, I don't, you know, don't expect to get very far. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I think it's the, the problem is it's, it's a period of, of, of Chinese history long enough ago and technical enough uh, that the source materials are a little bit thin on the ground. You know, we, we're not going to see someone like commenting on uh, Indic phonology or something from the third, fourth century, right? What's the literal translation of the moon up so that articulation base? Like, what's their word for place of articulation? Yeah, I mean, that thing that you highlighted to do with these three and whatever characters. What do they translate? This one, this is Hung Sound 2. Hung Sound 2, okay, so it need not be a yeah. No, it need not be L, and in fact, this one is not L, right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, but but it actually doesn't distinguish these two, does it? Because they're both, yeah, they're both uh, chains wall, yeah. Uh, oh, what is translating? It's money, turbid. 
Oh, sorry. Um, oh, I mean the um, the original category. Oh, this whole who can tell me actually? I just think of it as being the range. Like, um, like, 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 yeah, like, it's like, yeah, right. it's like, right. it's like, 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 it's uh, and we presume they call velars molars for two reasons. One, molars are at the back of your mouth, uh, but also the word molar itself started with a velar. So it has this kind of aquaphonic component to it as well. Uh, but, you know, it's not from a, from a point, from the perspective of articulatory phonetics, it's not very satisfactory to call your velars molars. You should call them velars, right? Um, <laughs> Although I don't know what the what the Chinese word for the velum is. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, so now we what am I doing here? My oh yes. So now uh, the 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 so-called ranks. I'm just showing you how you can pull this information out of the out of the rhyme tables. So you see we have these four rows. So those four rows are row one, row two, row three, and row four. Yeah. So uh, we would say that this uh, fun hen is rank four. Yeah, and I really want to emphasize that's what rank four means. It means is in row four. Yeah, it's a it's I think really best thought of as a as a fact about the mise en page of these rhyme uh, tables. And then the question is, what you know is is that just because they didn't have room to make a really <laughs> wide book, or are they trying to capture some phonetic information? I think everyone agrees that they're trying to capture some phonetic information. Uh, but I think if you ask yourself, what was that phonetic information when these rhyme tables were written, then you're talking about Middle Chinese and it's not very interesting to me. Um, and and there's, a, there's a huge literature about that, yeah. Um, so you can, you know, jump into that with both feet if you want. But from my perspective, it's enough to say whatever the thing that was being indexed by these rows is, that's what we are labeling with uh, rank uh, one, two, three, and four. And then I, I will also just make a terminological point that I'll come back to later, which is, uh, I think it's very helpful to distinguish between ranks and divisions. We haven't gotten to divisions yet, but they're both called dung in Chinese. Um, uh, but, but rank, we're talking about the rhyme tables and divisions, we're talking about the rhyme books, which we haven't got to yet. Okay, so, uh, uh, and then here is, uh, you know, just to show on this other page, uh, this is in rank one, this boom, yeah? So there you got it, I'll just breeze through once more, once more. I think uh, that will be nice, yeah, so here's what it actually looks like, here's my transcription. Uh, then here's the first page, here's my transcription, and then we have, you look on the left for the rhyme, you look on the left for the rhyme, you look up for the place and manner, you look up for the place and manner, and then you, I mean, here I'm marking to the right, but you, it's not actually marked explicitly in the document, you just see that there are four rows, right? And then if it's in row four, then it's ranked four, and if it's in uh, row one, then it's in rank one. Okay. One quick question about slide 14. I need to slide. Which you can tell me this is a two back. Yeah. No, what, just, what, just one. Okay. Yeah. So um, if we take this uh, character on a row and we do like we try to align it and we take that as the ground and then we take the rank of CN and we should write at PN, right? But it's not in the line of but it's one left, so there's a blank space. Are you talking about this? This? Yeah. Why is the why is the again not one place to write? Because it's the right of of Sien. Wait. Are, which one are you? Are, which one are you worried about? This one or this one? This one. That's this one. This one. This why one. is this one not here exactly? Oh. 
Ah, that is a really good question. And the answer is that that the so they're in complementary. Well, no, I, I need to say what's in complementary distribution first. The rhyme tables sort of more or less explicitly because I, I don't because because they're not labeled differently here, right? Um, but uh, like like well, let me start over again. The preface to these books lists all the initials and they list 36 initials, but you don't get 36 across the top. You only get like 21 across the top, I think. And that's because some of them are in complementary distribution. So they found a more convenient way of presenting. It, yeah. And actually there's no totally explicit way to, um, to map those sort of 21 onto those 36. It's like you just kind of have to know, yeah. Um, but it's pretty easy. So in those thirty-six, they distinguish, if you like, two voiceless, sorry, two voiced velar fricatives, yeah. One palatalized, one not palatalized, yeah. So, um, so, so if you like this, so, so this initial. And this initial followed by an I are uh, distinct from the perspective of the 36 initials of the Middle Chinese rhymes tables. Now, the question is, why haven't then I written them somehow different, even if it's just kind of sub one, sub two or something, yeah? The reason is because I'm basically following Baxter's uh, Middle Chinese and he doesn't distinguish them because they're in complementary distribution and they're not distinguished in the rhyme books. Okay, <laughs> so that, that's the answer. Right. So these are other points that if we were to project this back to whole Chinese, we could get rid of this nearly empty row. So we kind of need... um, yeah, I would like, I, I don't want to make larger claims than, than it being about, you know, about th that these two, yeah. But like, let's say from, from a, an earlier perspective, you can put them in the same row, but then which row do you put them in? But that would that would be a somewhat difficult question. You wouldn't actually want to do that at this point in Chinese history. Yeah. Uh, what I should have done is somehow, you know, written one with a gamma, like because I was talking about Middle Chinese. But in fact, I was hoping that no one would pay any attention to anything except the really large character. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, let's say, uh, I mean, another thing that becomes a, a sort of philosophical thing is which of these things that the Chinese are telling us about in their rhyme tables should be seen as phonemes, yeah? Um, and uh, it's clear that, let's say, these two kinds of uh, voice velar fricatives should not be seen as two separate phonemes, yeah? Um, uh, but they must have been salient enough allophons that when the authors of these uh, books said, how many initials do we have, they distinguished them. Yeah. Do you see why um, it's clear and muddy or the well, particular uh, books? Well, I mean, uh, like, if, yeah. I don't know, if you make the sound, but it's clear. And if you make the sound, but it's muddy, right? <laughs> I mean, like, what I would say is, let's oh, say, no, I mean, the this box. You have, uh, oh, yeah, Han and Han, and but then you have, uh, well, yeah, so here it was like these two. Okay, what's going on here? This one's being marked as voice, yeah, yeah, and this one's being marked as neither voice nor voiceless, which is the way to understand it is we're seeing this as some kind of yuck, yeah, so if you like. Voice velar fricatives in palatalized syllables are seen as like a second kind of yuck by the document itself. Yeah. And I think, you know, let's say if there's one thing in life that shouldn't bother you, it's, it's voice velar fricatives being palatalized to yuck, right? 
Uh, but it doesn't merge with the yuck initial. So that's maybe interesting. But anyhow, you know. Uh, so I think I did this already. Right, yeah. OK. So now uh, I'm just going through the different pieces of information you can pull from the rhyme table. So we did rhyme category, we did initial, and we did rank. So the only one left is uh, medial W, right? So how do you tell whether a word is medial W? So here is the close up uh, of the right side of, uh, of page 23. And we're looking at this information. Yeah, this is kind of, uh, let's, let's say it's metadata about the whole page. Okay, so now I've transliterated it here. And uh, let's see, the easiest part is it says 23rd because it's page 23. Yeah, so that's, you know, you can see that it says 23. Yeah, so that's the page. Yeah. Now, what is this outer term? Uh, no one knows, actually. <laughs> uh, the, the, the rhyme tables call some pages outer term and some pages inner term. Uh, and at least from the perspective of old Chinese uh, reconstruction, whatever that distinction is, we totally ignore it. So uh, you know, another thing you might want to write your table about is what does this outer term, inner term mean? Yeah. Maybe it just means verso recto or something, yeah? Uh, but what we're excited about here is where it says open. So here it says open, it's saying this whole page has no medial W. Now let's just prove to ourselves that that's true. Well, there you go. No medial W, right? I mean, <laughs> that may be proving that it's true is circular because I'm not putting medial W's there because it says not to, right? Uh, but uh, we're at least being consistent with our Middle Chinese uh, transcriptions. Okay, and then uh, here is uh, the first page, uh, which is inner turn. So now we've seen an, 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 an outer turn and an inner turn, but this one is also open. And now let's see at it. Okay. And then you say, oh, there's a lot of W's there. No, but they're not medial W's, are they? That, that, that's a, a way that Baxter indexes certain rhymes. Basically, there, there are more uh, rhyme distinctions before velar finals. And so we, we add this W to sort of index these extra rhymes before velar finals. But uh, it's still a kaiko because it's not a medial W. Okay. Um, now, so I was just showing you page 23 and page one because I've been showing you page 23 and page one, but now they're both Kaiko. So I need to prove that in fact, some Kuko uh, pages exist, right? So here we go. Uh, this is uh, page 24, uh, which is an outer term and it's closed. So now we look at it and yeah, sure enough, there's medial W here. And then some of you say, well, now wait a second. There are no medial Ws with the labial initials. And I would say, yeah, don't let it bother you because uh, they're already labial, right? They're, they're the, or to put it another way, the hoko kaiko distinction is neutralized uh, with labials. Now, actually, if the, uh, I'll say the, the rhyme books, this is right, sometimes like put some syllables, some labial, uh, like some labial initial syllables get put in hoko and some get put in kaiko. Uh, and that is reflected in Baxter's transcription. So you will see things like P, W, A, N, and whatnot, but it's not phonemic. So uh, that's a kind of just keeping track of a philological uh, artifice, right? Okay, so anyhow, here is our, uh, our, Coco example. Uh, and now one thing that bothers me that I haven't seen people write about it very much uh, is let's say if you just look up, uh, maybe I'll just you know not be looking at that picture quite yet. If you just look up a character like this one, maybe uh, in some standard lexicographical source like the internet, uh, there's a, a there's a six character way of representing its pronunciation. So you give what is its rhyme category? 
what is its initial, what is its grade, uh, I, or yeah, I'll say rank, what is its rank, uh, what else am I missing, is it hook or typo, oh, what is its tone, am I missing one, I don't remember what it is, uh, but um, yeah, so, so the way you kind of spell a syllable, syllable in Middle Chinese is by, I give the head character, that's like the character I'm interested in, and then I give six characters that tell me it's rhyme category, it's initial category, it's uh, whether or not it has a uh, medial, what its tone is, right? So there's the standard uh, six character way of spelling. Now, if you look that up in uh, any source, you only get two categories, hukko and kaiko. Either it has a medial or it doesn't have a medial, right? But if you look at the actual primary sources, they also have this this um, category, which is open clothes, yeah? So, so no one talks about this much. It's considered sort of too detailed, too small fry to worry about. Uh, but uh, I was, uh, and I don't know what this is, uh, and I'm curious about that and, and happy if someone writes their assignment about it, but I did go ahead and just check, like, okay, here's a, uh, a, a Hukai, um, page, and this is what I get, uh, and so, I don't know, maybe it's this particular rhyme, schwa, sort of some kind of rounded schwa before Beeler's, anyhow, I just wanted to throw this in there to acknowledge the complexity of the primary sources, they, the primary sources do acknowledge a, uh, an open closed uh, set, uh, but, um, we don't uh, talk about it, we don't deal with it much. And there are um, apparently, you know, philological ways to decide whether or not these are uh, closed or open. And in fact, in this case, they are, uh, they don't have a medium, but, right? so, so we wouldn't, you wouldn't see these, these characters being described as Hoko, you would see them being described as Kaiko, even though the Yunjing actually puts them in this funny, you know, neither fish nor fowl category. Okay, so I just wanted to sort of like, and one of the things I'm, want, I'm doing generally in the course, you may notice is um, highlighting things that I see as problematic in the hopes that maybe, you know, you'll look into them more, uh, or at least in order to not, you know, uh, present things as being more tidy than they actually are. Yeah, okay. Could it uh, be so a could yeah. it be a distinction a distinction between yoda sized and non yoda sized i notice an i in there uh are, is there an i in all of them no the, the i is only in the third division which uh, sorry in the third rank uh, which you will see is always the case the, oh, okay the i mean now that you pointed it out just just look at row 3 oh well nothing there uh, row three, lots of eyes. Yeah. Row three, lots of eyes. Yeah. We actually, that's what the I means in our transcription. It means is in row three. I mean, uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that because the difference between ranks and divisions, but we haven't gotten that to that yet. For now, basically, uh, type B, because we learned that already, type B, there's an I. What that means is it's in row three of the rhyme tables. There is also a thing to describe. You don't anymore. Yes. But uh, that's not in the in the, 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 the kind. Well, so now let's just go back because we had that here. So this so so this one, which is the very first, yeah. The very first one is um is it this one? Yeah, is categorized as open, yeah? But a very similar looking um, rhyme, but this time with the vowel schwa, is categorized as open slash closed. So, I mean, that was when I was looking at it, that was also what I thought, is it's like, it has something to do with the, there is some rounding going on, but it's not in the medial, anyhow, I don't know, yeah? Uh, and if you talk to anyone, uh, who who is other than me, they will say, this is just like, who cares? Like, this is a tiny issue that was solved ages ago. Uh, just if you want to know whether a character is Haiko, Kuko, Kuko, Kaiko, 
or Hooko, just look it up anywhere. And, and this is a reason why we have dictionaries from after 1161. <laughs> yeah, is that these problems have been worked out. Um, but, you know, I, I, again, I just think it's kind of, I don't know, personally, I think it's important to, you know, return to the primary sources and sort of figure out um, what this what this house of cards is built on, right? So, so, so that's why I'm drawing your attention to this uh, complication, right? Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, oh, I got, I, I've sort of gone through this already, but so we have unrounded, rounded, and then what I call them semi-rounded, uh, although, you know, we're going to pretend those don't exist. And um, yes, and then, and then now I just want to make a, a methodological observation that I have made before in a way, but this, you know, I'm showing you these transcriptions, especially for the, the benefit of you who, who, who who um, can't read the Chinese characters, but even if you can read the Chinese characters, you're probably not reading them in your mind as middle Chinese. Uh, so I think the transcriptions are helpful, but of course, showing the, the transcriptions to, sh to show you what the document is showing you is circular, right? So, um, so now I just want to actually give some evidence that the, the hoko are actually rounded, yeah? So uh, here we go. Uh, these are kaiko syllables and these are hoko syllables. And the middle Chinese is, you should understand, is as just it's recording the fact that these uh, words occur on a page of the Yunjing uh, that is marked as kaiko. And these uh, transcriptions are recording the fact that uh, those characters appear on a page that is marked hooko and so far i'm just saying w is an arbitrary index of what page it happens to be on but then if we look at the uh, sino vietnamese readings or in the, the mandarin readings uh you will say okay it's a pretty good arbitrary index to choose yeah both sino vietnamese and mandarin have some medial wa there, and uh, the same two varieties of sign of Vietnamese, and then they don't have the wa on this side. So, so uh, I guess one thing I uh, and want to stress here is you have to look outside the rhyme tables actually in order to um, give a phonetic meaning to the uh, kaiko and the hooko, uh, unless you, you know, I mean, maybe you don't. Uh, if you just understand closed as as lip rounding, yeah. If closed is enough to mean lip rounding for you and open is enough to mean no lip rounding, then you don't have to look at this evidence. But I wanted to throw it in there uh, because I think that, that, that that's a little less clear to me uh, than the actual analysis of place and manner of articulation. Um, so there you go. Anyhow. Uh, so that's it for... Uh, Sorry, yeah. Uh, these rhyme uh, books, yeah, you in putting nasal voice, aspirate voices in that order, or is it well? That's that's just what you show. You're you're asking about the match with the Sanskrit tradition. Yeah. Yeah. They they put let's just go with the dealers. They go K K H. No. Yeah. They go K K H G, N G. Yeah. So, I mean, so that's, I think that's not a coincidence, right? Um, all, the, all the other uh, tables you show, it's, it's Nasal's voice. That's because you read from right to left. Oh, okay. yeah, well. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the answer. And open was with W or without W? Open is without W. All right. Um, and it's also logical that yeah, is before the arrangements, but well, it's grouped together with those. So other yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, the way it looks to me is they sort of, they have a whole bunch of sounds that the Sanskrit tradition doesn't make obvious where to put them, although actually, yeah, is not such a case. Yeah, is quite near the end, though. I don't know. I don't, I, yeah, I don't know about this. Like, how did the index... Uh, how do the, you know what what class are yeah and 
and visarga and, and h put into the, in Sanskrit phonological theory. It's not my business. Um, but actually, like, let's say, yeah, yeah, um, or I don't know, I'm going to go to limb here, but like, what's the, what's the place of articulation of an H, right? There's two schools thought about this. One is it's a glottal, and one is that it has no uh, place of articulation, right? Uh, and I do think that yeah is some, somehow, like, like let, let's say, may, maybe we could be calling them semi-vowels or something like that. Well, and, <laughs> yeah. well from the perspective of this, uh, voice dealer that becomes dull. It's logical to put the old amongst the dealers. Um, yeah, they don't. They put it amongst the originals, right? Like, which should say we 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 have the the yeah velar fricatives. Yeah. yeah. So the velar the proper velar fricatives go with the velars, but then this palatalized velar fricatives goes with uh, the glottal stop, uh, the uh, and the and the ya and. I think the, the and, and and the 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 X yeah so um, anyhow uh, I'm going to stop talking about the rhyme tables now yeah <laughs> unless anyone strongly objects to that okay uh, and then the the point for the reconstruction of old Chinese is that just this is the first time in Chinese history that we get systematic phonetic information about how uh, pronunciations are, um, yeah, what, what, how things are being pronounced. You know, earlier when you were saying like, oh, look, yeah, you know, here's a Tocharian loan or here's an Indic transcription. Uh, there's a lot of interpretation we have to do on our side. Uh, but in this case, they've done the, the analysis and we're just trying to kind of represent the analysis, which is why I was saying right at the beginning of the class that we can basically take Middle Chinese uh, as if it were attested in a romanization. What, what's the old Chinese source of this yod sound that ends up in the Can you just repeat that? And what's the old Chinese source for this yod, middle Chinese yod that ends up being in the uh, it's a, it's a, let's say, it, it's a, I mean, that it depends on the historical, at, at, at what point in history we're talking about, uh, but basically, uh, it's the same as the, th there's really no dis distinction between these two voice field fricatives. So they both have the same origin. Um, although uh, we did mention that uh, if, they, if they don't, the default reconstruction for that one in the Baxter cigar system is the uvular G. I've got another uh, stupid question. Yeah. Um, initial W doesn't occur because there's always something before. Yeah, it doesn't occur. Yeah. There is no, there, in Middle Chinese, there is no initial W. Uh, in Old Chinese, according to Baxter Cigar, there is no initial W. Uh, where they reconstruct a uvular, a, a labio, the voice labio uvular stop. Uh, Schutzler reconstructs a W. 